Hi everyone, welcome to another Pixel Starships video and today we'll be covering uh, basic AI. So this is a basic AI guide which I'll call AI101 uh, and it will be applicable to all captains who are currently ship level uh, 1 to 6. Now this is meant to be a beginner's AI guide where I'll cover concepts like you know, why is AI important, the prerequisites for AI, uh, the logic you know, behind how so uh, Savvy Soda, uh, which are the creators of this game, executes uh, AI commands and you know, uh, basically the setting up of basic AI commands for your crew and rooms. Hence, if you are a new player, uh, I strongly suggest you, know, you listen through the entire video as it will really help you get a very good understanding and firm foundation of what I think are the very core mechanics of this game. Uh, if you are a veteran player, you'll probably already know most of the things I'm about to say. But yeah, still stick around and maybe you'll learn something new. So assuming you're still watching this uh, means you're either probably new to the game or you just want to find out a bit more, which is great, right? So firstly, I'm going to talk about, you know, why AI is important. So when you first start the game, you know, you won't have uh, actually any AI that you can uh, program. So you actually have to start or resort to uh, what you call manual targeting. So in, in any battle, right, when you start, uh, basically you, you use your weapons. So as you can see here, and then you kind of like drag this onto a specific room that you kind of want to target. So the problem with this is that, you know, this method is just not very sustainable, right? Uh, as you progress in the game, you're going to have more access to different weapons. And it's just going to be, you know, physically impossible to just manage so many weapons for every single battle. So the most important reason why you want to learn how to program is that uh, based on your programming skills, right, you can actually execute strategies that are unique to your ship and to your crew. Hence, you've got to work with what you've got and use a strategy based on your current crew. And that will be a huge determining factor in terms of whether you win or lose. Alright, so how do we get started, right? So what are the prerequisites for you know, configuring your AI? So the first thing, is that you need to be ship level 4 so that's the, the very minimum ship level you have to be because at level 4 you will have access to this room called the command room or rather the command center right so once you have this command center then you actually can start you know uh, you have this access to this button here where you click it's called AI and then that's where you can program your AI rules the second thing that you actually need in order to program uh, your AI is a laboratory so as you can see here, it needs to be again, I think minimum uh, lab level two, and then you will have access to uh, one of you know, these training modules called Python. So it looks something like this. Basically you research that and then you will be able to unlock uh, programming of AI. Great, so now let's get down to setting up the AI commands. So in this section, I will split it into two parts. The first part will be AI for rooms and then the second part will be AI for crew. So let's talk about AI for rooms, right? So lesson one, you need to understand how AI works. So it first starts with a command. So as you can see here, you can click a new command. So each command has a condition and an action, as you can see here. So these are the list of different conditions. So you can select that, and then you will have a action that you have to select uh, that has to be ex executed if the condition is met, right? So in this case, uh, these are actually the default uh, commands that come with uh, every single weapon. So uh, basically you have a condition of none, which means that this condition is always true. And then the action is to actually increase the power by one. The second uh, set of commands is basically again a condition of none and then to target a random enemy room. An important thing to note is how the game will actually process your commands. As you know, uh, games have uh, something called frame rates. It's the rate at which you know the entire image refreshes, uh, you know, every time per second, right? So most of them run on like thirty frames per second or sixty frames per second. So likewise, in this game, for every single frame of the game, uh, the game will actually loop through all the different commands. So in this case, you loop through the first line of code to see if the condition is met, and then execute the uh, action. Then in the next frame, you will actually execute the second you know, command. Basically, you will cycle through all the different commands that you actually programmed 
to that specific room or crew. Now, uh, I'll just leave this uh, at that for now, but this concept is extremely important, uh, especially when you design you know, advanced level AI commands, uh, which I'll probably cover in, in a subsequent video. So, uh, lesson number two is that always assign power to the room, as you can see here, the first uh, line of code here. And the second one is to assign a enemy room to target. Uh, it's rather common sense, right? So you need to, of course, give your weapons power and then to shoot an enemy room. So this is pretty much the most basic form of AI. Uh, personally, I like to use uh, increase power by one, but you can also use set maximum power. You know, it's, it's really up to you. There's not that much difference, but I feel that uh, setting um, the command to increase power by one uh, cycles through my power more efficiently and basically distributes the power across all my different weapons more evenly. Right. So, uh, lesson number three, focus fire AI. So when you first start the game, uh, this will probably be your single most important strategy in terms of uh, AI commands that will actually last you way into the late game. So basically what this um, focus fire does is it forces all your weapons to target a specific enemy room and keep targeting that room until the ship is dead. So let's run through how to actually program this. So as you can see on the first line, again, it's a, it's a command to increase the power by one until it's max power. And then you actually have um, these different lines of code here. So the core principle or the core concept here is that you want to set a condition called your ship has full shield and then target a specific enemy target room, right? So let, let's break it down what this means, right? So this condition basically activates when your ship is full and your ship is full when you actually start the battle, right? You know, on both ships, either your ship or the enemy ships, we're going to start with full shield unless you are, you know, power or leveling up your shield room. So this condition will always be true, right? And hence it will trigger the room to target a specific uh, target room. Now, as you think about the battle, right, you know, um, the enemy is going to start targeting your room and, and you're going to start targeting the enemy's room. So very quickly, your shields are going to go down. And after the sh your shields go down, this condition will not be fulfilled anymore. In fact, if you look through the entire list, it's basically uh, commands that list either my shields, my ship shields are full shield, or the enemy ship's uh, shield is full shield. And after that, you know, if both um, your ship and the enemy ship do not meet these conditions, none of these um, lines of code be triggered. So remember I talked about frames earlier. Uh, in this case, because your second line of command is to target the enemy shields and you apply this uh, line of command for all your weapons, it basically forces the game to, on the second frame, target enemy shields. And in this case, because it's on the, the command is executed on the same frame, all your weapons will actually target that same uh, target room. So in this case, you target the same shield or the same uh, engine room or the same laser. So for lesson number four, it's actually about picking the right rooms to target. So in general, you want to focus rooms that are small. You know, in this case, it's a two by two for this bolter and it only has uh, very little health. So in this case, this, this particular room only has one health. So what this means is that you can only have a limited amount of armor surrounding this room, right? In this case, you can see the total defense is only 12, providing a, only a 10.71% reduction in the damage done to this room. Uh, what this means is that when you focus fire a room like this, it's going to be very difficult for the enemy to have his crew repair this room fast enough before it starts taking damage again by your weapons. And, and what this means is that you can quickly focus fire a room like this and, and start doing how damage to them because of this, the little health that each of these rooms have. So for me, um, right now at this stage of, or rather this leak that I'm in, I find that you know, the, the ideal rooms to target for me are still the enemy shields. Uh, but later on, this is not a best room to target because the amount of armor surrounding this as well as you know uh, the amount of health it has so you want to be targeting actually rooms like the security room which only has one health uh, to enemy engines that you know have two health um, android rooms that also have two health 
but you know very small in, in terms of size and finally um, you can target lasers and reactors as you know the fallback uh, rooms to target if there's no other rooms left to target so just to show you some run you through some battles here all right let's let's target this guy so mr score 56 right he's the same ship level as me um let's look at his so his design is not that great as you can see he has put a lot of armor surrounding kind of useless uh, rooms or rather rooms that don't really require a lot of armor whereas you know his critical rooms like his lasers and shields they don't really have the armor required so as as mentioned uh my focus fire strategy is, is to target the shields because i find that you know uh, shields deflect or, or absorb a lot of the incoming fire as you can see here my shields are actually absorbing a lot of his fire and hence for me to disable the shields um, is, is going to basically you know increase the overall damage output to him All right so now as you can see he has some AI program to uh, repair his shields but because I'm focused firing the shields um, you know they are just running into and, and, and kind of just dying Whereas for myself, you know, I am actually, you know, managing the way in which the crew repairs and gets out of the way before the next volley actually hits me. Alright, so in the next section, let's talk about um, crew AI. So when you first start the game, you're probably not going to have the best crew or very low level crew. So it's not going to matter as much. However, in order to level up your crew, you're going to need to win battles. And to win battles, you want to make the best use of crew as possible. So lesson one is to actually assign each crew a home room. So what do I mean by a home room? So as you can see, you know, in my ship design, I've actually put all my crews into uh, different weapons. So I've assigned them so-called home rooms in terms of like, uh, in this case, uh, this guy, I put him into a laser room, right? So in general, you want to put crew into rooms based on the different stats that they have, right? So in this case, uh, I have a hero crew called Guan Yu, and he has very high weapon stats. So in this case, it's a we max weapon stat of 24. And what this means is that it will actually improve the rate of fire of this weapon. So if you stack a few of these uh, high weapon stat guys together, they can potentially increase the fire rate of this particular weapon by a lot, right? And of course, you know, the, the higher fire rate, the higher DPS and, you know, so higher chance of you winning your opponent. So in general, uh, it's a very good strategy to place all these uh, crew into you know your weapons room and then basically um, you know give the added bonuses to, get to them so how do you go about setting a, um, a home room so if you go into this AI basically you just need a line uh, of command that says none and then target your home room in this case it's the laser room so what this means is that as you know as I mentioned earlier uh, the AI will cycle through all the different commands and right at the bottom, it will always trigger this command to go to the laser room unless there is a condition above that is triggered before that. Uh, I will get into this uh, a little bit later, but basically, you know, if all the conditions before that are not triggered, by default, this person will actually go to the laser room. So lesson number two is to actually set a repair command. Now, in general, you want most of your crew to actually have some form of repair command because if you don't repair your rooms, they're going to be damaged and you're going to get tick how damaged and you're going to lose the battle. So you rather lose crew than kind of lose your HP. So in order to do that, the conditions are pretty simple. Basically, you want to set up a command where you have the desired room. Uh, for example, uh, let's say your hangar, right? You want to repair this. You want to dedicate one crew to repair the hangar. So what you do is you select this command uh, your hanger has HP less than 100% as the condition and then you need to select this option so this is a very important option it's called target condition room what this does is it tells the crew to target that specific room that has that condition so as you know we mentioned right um, in this case if there's a particular room or rather if the hanger has HP less than 100% it will target that specific room so this also applies for you know other things like lasers. You can have many lasers in your ship, but only the laser that has less than 100 HP 
that's where this action will basically force the crew to go to this particular room. If you use things like target your laser room, it will just target any random laser room that is nearest to the crew. So you want to be selecting this option instead. Okay. So in this case, uh, you can either you know, make a specific uh, rule for a specific room, like lasers for this case, or you can even just you know keep it general, right? By just you know putting a command that says if any friendly room right is less than hundred percent HP, target the condition room. So let's let's watch a replay uh, of a battle I did uh, earlier, and there's actually an intermediate um, AI technique that I want to showcase here. I won't go too much into the details. Uh, it'll probably be in my next guide, but I want you to just you know observe. Um, the difference between how my opponent AI works versus you know my AI. All right. So as you can tell, I'm focus firing the shield room, um, which is you know doing a lot of damage to him. He has some AI crew that's rushing over to actually repair them. But as you can see, it cannot keep up because I'm focus firing and, and they cannot repair it quick enough. Right? So that's that's allowing me to do crucial how damage uh, to his ship. Uh, while my ship, you know, is still actually in good condition, right? So now we have reached a point where my shields are all the way down, um, to to less than or to less than zero, and what you're observing here, right, is my crew going into the reactor room to repair this, and when it's done repairing, it actually moves out to another room, right? So this is actually an intermediate AI technique where I'm not sure what's the right term for it, but basically it makes your crew kind of dodge in and out of, of uh, rooms because um, you don't want your room you don't want your crew to be in a room when the enemy is firing it because you will take you know uh, damage your crew will actually take damage so because you know uh, enemy the enemy uh, ships fires and volleys um, you kind of want the, sh the the ship or your you kind of want your room to take damage while your crew is not in there and then to actually you know uh, get your crew in to repair the damage and get out before the next volley comes in. So that way you increase the survivability of your crew significantly. And honestly, that will be the determining factor in terms of winning against your opponent. You know, how fast can you repa repair your ship and how little damage can your crew take um, as compared to your opponent. So yeah, I think that's all I want to cover for this basic AI video guide. Uh, I hope you found it useful. In my next video, I will cover you know, some other strategies and some more intermediate and advanced AI commands to execute these strategies. And yeah, if you like this video, drop a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, do subscribe to receive more Pixel Starship content. Thanks and peace.